<laughs> when I t every time you grab me my shirt, you're a shirt grabber. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, Richard's about to come over uh, to talk about episode three, the island, the search for a boat dock. Uh, what? <laughs> Don't you do it? So we're waiting on him to show up. Uh, but in the meantime, I just, uh, me and Henry have been sort of packing up this room. This is all the, the seats and all the No, 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 carpet. wagoneer parts. So it's, yeah, it's the wagoneer parts. And so we got the seats back. There's all the carpet. We got all the parts and pieces. We're waiting on uh, Richard to come up and we'll start talking about that. But, uh, but in the meantime, some people have asked, how do you manage your time? How do you keep track of everything? How do you take care of all the stuff you got to take care of? And I think a major key to that, and actually a major key to leading like a productive and enjoyable life is surrounding yourself with hardworking, like-minded, intelligent people that add to your team and don't tear you down. The, you know, folks that build you up. And I've done that at home with Henry and my wife. I do that in my personal life and I do it at work. Fighting and arguing with people is a total waste of energy and I just don't do it. You really should have no space in your life for people that want to tear you down. On this episode, Henry, we're going to meet Richard. He's the one that helps me remodel the houses along with sweet Jeffrey. He's one of those people I'm talking about. He's a great guy, but he is a couple minutes late, so now we got to wait on him. Cue the intro. I gotta try to put this insulation up under here because the, we, I just got that new paint job. Is that heat insulator? Because I don't want to melt my brand new paint job. Yeah. Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, oh hey, here. what's up? When'd you guys get here? I think they just showed up. I wanted to do this in here just to force myself to recognize that I've got a Jeep that I gotta finish up. I, we gotta finish this. I mean, this was something I've been looking forward to. You know, we kinda got a giant project coming up, so you need to kinda tie some loose ends here, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, the, this is, what we got like less than a week and then it's the island time, so. Yeah. All hands on deck. Yeah. All right, so I gotta put all this insulation up here, but I gotta clean all this off uh, underneath of the hood. So that's what I gotta do, brother. All right. Let's recap what we did that day. You were over at, uh, at Charles Development. The Hampton Stop Island the Day of the Development that uh, me and uh, my partner, Jay Malonso, have going on called Plantation Hill. And he it's stopped. sweet. He stopped by to pick me up and we, uh, I was actually pouring concrete on one of the houses that we're building out there and uh, he got me at just the right time because it was fire hot out there and I was dying. Dude, it was hot. I was about to have a heat stroke, so I jumped in the air-conditioned truck that he had nice and cool. Well, we saw Steve, old Diebold was there. Yeah, Diebold was there. He, he, uh, he bought a lot from us. He's building a house in there too to sell. Steve kept putting his hand on my door. Did you notice that? He kept putting his, he just was felt so comfortable and I wanted to bite his finger off. It's probably, he, he probably moved air conditioning. Yeah, he moved his little hand just in time. So anyway. So anyway, uh, Hampton wanted to go up and uh, look at the island. And on the way, we had a great idea. I have a cousin uh, that is in the pier building business. So he, he, has, a, he has a barge that drives pilots uh, for seawalls or piers or boat docks or whatever, you know, boat houses. What whatever. was his name? His name is Joby, J-O-B-Y. Yeah. Uh, and I called him and he happened to be just up the road on the lake driving some pilots. So we made a quick trip over there to check out what he was doing. Uh, and then we took him out to the island and started, uh, started really developing uh, a, a game plan on what we're going to do. Well, we, we need some more patio up there, obviously. So we, we kind of want to level out everything up top yeah. and get more of a, a flat area. And then, and then maybe come down. I may build some retaining walls. Uh, What's the chances of cutting a, uh, a good channel to it? Or do you even need a good channel? I guess you could. N uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that'd be pretty easy. When the water comes down. I want, we want to do all this when they drop the lake. Yeah. That would be this year. When you, uh, year, right? when they drop the lake, all you got to do, they're going to drop it. Uh, okay. Which I guess you don't really need it to be dropped, do you? Probably be harder on you. It'd be harder on me to drive the pilings. So we need wow. to drive the pilings first. Now, yeah. We come up with some good ideas about how we might wrap the front of the island uh, with, with docks. So that, cause since it's, it's very rocky, we've talked about what we could do to pretty that up. But one of the things we come up with was maybe building a dock around most of the perimeter. Which sounds really cheap. Huh? That doesn't sound expensive at all. Yeah, well, yeah. So this weekend, uh, we actually get to start work on the island. Because, you know, it was Dr. Baldwin 
Well, I'll explain it to you inside. I'll tell you that in a second. This is the last week the owners are in there. We bought it from a doctor, very interesting guy who fell on some hard times. He had some health issues, and uh, I just felt like it was the right thing to, to, to get the house, but let them stay in there for a month and give them time to kind of pack up and, and get out of there. I've had some tough times myself, and I think when you can get back and help someone out when they're in need, I, I, think, it's, I think it's a good thing. Dr. Baldwin, like, you know, he's a unique character. Right. And he, uh, apparently, like, all those rocks he brought out there themselves. This was a couple, of, this was like, I don't know, this was maybe 10 years ago when he didn't have Parkinson's. My dad would, would, he dumped, he dumped all these rocks here to solve the uh, erosion problem. He dumped all the rocks in the front yard and then carried them each individually over here. He kept it from. In a wheelbarrow or he just physically? In a wheelbarrow and like a, he had, a, at one point I saw him with a dolly. Yeah. I was too young, I couldn't really help him at all. Yeah. But I watched. Yeah, like he dumped he all that had, rock. He actually had some bleachers that came from somewhere that he... Yeah, that some he bleachers had. from the Louisiana Tech Stadium, the That's old right, stadium. The old Louisiana Tech Stadium. There were bleachers for Tech, and when Tech got rid of oh, them... Oh, the old Tech landing? Yeah. Uh, my dad bought them. Or they gave them to him. And then he just got out here with a giant crane and sat them. You see how they're sat pretty evenly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they, they're very even. They're almost kind of like a seawall, but when the water's bad, it almost actually works as a Yeah, pressure. yeah. I think Baldwin's oldest son was there. Oh yeah, Bal Bal he was actually pretty helpful. And when you say you want a dog going out that way, mm -hmm. out that way actually is super shallow. Is it? Like all around here, it'll be waist deep. He went out in the water. Yeah, him, him and one of Joby's uh, hands actually walked uh, like 200 yards out into the water and showed us it was Yeah, it was, like, waist it was waist deep the whole way out. Which makes you wonder like where that channel is. We gotta figure out how to get traffic, you know, how to get out to go fishing and people are really gonna be using that to figure right. out the best way to get to, to get the channel from there. Because I actually talked to a guy the other day that worked for Joby and he was telling me how he, he that's his favorite place to fish on the whole lake up there. Right there. I've heard that from several people that they, that they love fishing that little spot. Yes, apparently in the summertime the bass school out there because it's a, like a big flat. So we talked about maybe possibly building a pier, you know, a good ways out so that people could actually fish off of that pier. Wait, what? Say that one more time. So we went and visited that other place though, right? He took us out to that dock he built. Yeah. Which I thought looked great. I kind of like that dock. I like how that looks. You got two boat lifts and uh, and then kind of like a little recreation area. I think you could fish, you could put pull boats up against that. I think that looks good. I think we could really tie in the docks around that yeah. we talked about to, you know, right. that. We really like the way that dock turned out. We really envisioned seeing something a lot like that on our island. Oh, I do need you to help me with this nut over here. Like I was pulling, so I was pulling these uh, seat belts out. And this one, it's frozen up underneath. I just need somebody to hold on to that while I uh, unscrew it. WD-40? Yeah, I scored it last night with WD-40. So me and Richard have been waiting to get into the island for about a month now, and it's finally gonna happen. Richard found out that his sister-in-law just had a baby, and I think he's about to try to break some bad news to me. What else do we need to talk about? Can I talk about how there's a small chance I may not be able to do this weekend? No, let's not talk about that. Are you serious? Is my wife? She's going to go with her and the two kids. I feel awful. Yeah. I'd feel awful too while I was working at the island. What if something happened? Though? Then you'd feel real awful. Yeah. You're like the worst thing ever. Well, you got to do what you got to do, but I mean, this is only, there's only one first weekend and this is it, you know? So just take that into consideration. <laughs> uh, no, you got to handle your business, man. Family first, you know that. But you better be there. <laughs> So that's, that's pretty much the deal, right? We found a guy to do the work. We found a plan for it. We, we know how we want it to look, and so that's it. The Baldwins have moved out now, and so we can get cracking. So let's that's get cracking. That's a wrap. Let's go to work. <laughs> so we've come up with the final plan for the dock. We're gonna go with a long dock and boathouse off the main point, and then wrap the outer edge of the island with a short dock so that people can access the water and fish. We finally got access into the island now and things are starting to get pretty interesting.